Welcome back to Science Faction, the series that takes a closer look at technologies and inventions science fiction practically predicted. This week, Maddie's personal favourite, Star Trek. Let's start with the personal communicator. The personal communicator is attached to a crew member's uniform on the left side of the chest. The PCs allowed Starfleet to talk directly to a ship's computer and is activated with a simple biometric tap which issues an electronic chirp to confirm that it is ready for use. To me, these were the first wearables. Just like the personal computer, devices such as the Samsung Gear allow you to make and receive calls with the touch of a button. And that little chirp we grew fond of has been replaced with small vibrations or the notifications we hear when we have an incoming message. The Starfleet can also use their PCs to interact with the ship's computer using voice command. This to me is Siri or Google by asking it, okay Google, or even Microsoft's Cortana which has its root in another science fiction altogether, Halo. In recent years, we've also seen the addition of fingerprint sensors to our smart devices to better security, but it's only a matter of time till other biometrics are added. It won't just be our fingerprint that will be measured, but also our pulse and maybe even our vein patterns. The handiest and most practical facet for any crew member is the appropriately named PAD. It is a versatile computer device that allows Starfleet personnel to work anywhere that suits them. Surely this doesn't even require explanation. Star Trek's artist Doug Drexler even said that he found the similarity between an iPad and the pad that was designed in the 80s eerily similar. The pad never had a keyboard built into its casing, just like the iPad, and its geometry is exactly the same. The small palm-sized pads make me think of things like the iPad mini or the phablets we have nowadays, and the tray size pads are akin to the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. They are the same thing. The medical tricorder is a multifunctional device that integrates computers, scanning sensors, and data storage. Information gathered is analysed by an internal computer that displays the results on the tiny front screen. Today, there are several companies all vying for the top prize of $7 million for the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize competition. Entries are designing actual tricorders. And they have to be able to monitor five different vital signs, such as blood pressure, body temperature, or oxygen saturation and they need to be able to scan for a dozen different conditions. One of the front runners is the Scanadu Scout. It's a sleek design and it works by being placed next to the patient's forehead. Scanadu have already raised 1.6 million of their own from the Indiegogo campaign. A replicator is a device equipped with a built-in low resolution transporter engine. It is used to transform raw matter into any inanimate object, provided a molecular template of the desired item is stored in the device's memory. Replicators which synthesize food are found throughout 24th century starships. Back in the 21st century, we don't quite have food transporter vending machines yet, but we do have 3D food printing, and this is something even NASA is taking seriously. In 2013, they awarded $125,000 to the Systems and Maintenance Research Department to go and create them a 3D food printer capable of making a pizza, because apparently that's what astronauts miss the most. But if 3D food printing doesn't impress you, scientists have recently cracked how to turn light into matter, just as we see on the transporter machines aboard the Enterprise. The idea of smashing two photons, that's light particles, together to create an electron and a positron, that's the matter, has been around since 1934, but it's only recently that physicists think that they can prove this will actually work. Now, if you're into science and you like the idea of a photon-photon collider, this is how it works. The experiment is planned for about a year's time, so who knows, replicators could be with us sooner than we first thought. 24th century hypospray administers medicine directly into the bloodstream. A high-powered jet of liquid, rather than a needle, penetrates the skin to ensure a clean and hygienic transfer. I often wonder if there is a Star Trek specific ideas hub at MIT because they've only gone and engineered a device that delivers a high pressured jet of medicine into the skin without the use of a hypodermic needle. 
The design is based around a mechanism called the Lorentz Force Actuator, which I think is awesome. This is a very powerful small magnet that's surrounded by a coil and attached to a piston. When you apply a current, this interacts with the magnetic field and it forces the piston forward, ejecting the medicine at a very high pressure and high velocity, about the speed of sound through a nozzle that's about the width of a mosquito's proboscis. Amongst other benefits, such as hygiene, this technology will help to prevent needle stick injuries, and it will also make the lives of people who have to inject themselves with medicine on a daily basis, such as insulin, a lot better because the hyperspray is pain-free. That's all for my Star Trek science faction, but honestly, I have only just scratched the surface of the technologies that Star Trek have seen predicted. If you have any other favourites, please do let me know in the comments below because it has become my favourite subject. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!